Welcome back to the channel everyone, Raw Man here. Today we're taking a look at Brain Lord for the Super Nintendo. And since we're in the middle of a pandemic, I can't get my hair cut, so it looks like a big pile of shit. Brain Lord was developed by a company called Produce and published by Enix in 1994. Yeah, the same team who worked on the seventh saga. Brain Lord is a top-down action-adventure game with a very strong emphasis on puzzles. The game opens with a cutscene in which your father explains that he's a dragon warrior and he's searching for the last dragon. He asks that you take over his quest if he doesn't return. Well, of course he doesn't return, and you set out to finish what he started, I guess? You have a bunch of friends who are always hanging around everywhere you go, both in town and in dungeons. There's not really any real character development with them, they just kind of tell you things. There are a total of five dungeons, and these are where the majority of the game take place. I'm sad to say that there's no big sprawling overworld to explore, to which I was kind of surprised and disappointed. There are only two towns in the whole game, and a few times you'll travel through grassy plains, but they're over before you know it. And that's it. Practically the whole game takes place in dungeons. It's pretty much one right after another, and these dungeons are huge. Unfortunately, they're also quite dull. They're packed full of monsters, though they don't add much to the overall difficulty. You earn money by killing enemies, and if you die, you lose half. Monsters respawn as soon as you go outside of their spawn area, so this is great for farming cash, but it's annoying as hell when you're just trying to solve a puzzle. Speaking of which, the majority of this game's challenge lies within the puzzles, and they can get pretty tough. You'll be pushing a lot of rocks and balls to activate switches, or solve riddles which require you to press certain switches or push other objects or whatever. There's tons of puzzles, but due to the lack of variety, they might start to wear on you. There's also a lot of platforming. Platforming sections are not too bad, but they can get pretty frustrating. To help you get through these big-ass dungeons, you can view a map by using the X-ray glasses. This is nice, except they don't show you where you've been or haven't been, or where locked doors are located. So it's not of much use. Well, thanks anyway. Overall, I find the dungeons kind of bland and ultimately not very fun. In town, and occasionally in the dungeons, you'll encounter merchants. You can purchase equipment, consumable items, and sometimes fairies. Fairies act as companions, and they all have different abilities, like being able to shoot fire or to light up dark rooms. Collecting blue spheres will allow your fairies to level up. You, on the other hand, do not level up. To increase your attack and defense, you'll need to equip different weapons and armor. To increase your HP, use heart items which are typically found in chests. The graphics of Brain Lord are a mixed bag. The characters look meh, and the dungeons are bland like I said earlier, but I think the towns look great. In fact, the town of Toronto is one of my favorite video game towns ever. It just looks so well kept. Nice green grass, clear water, the buildings look neat. I know I'm focusing way too much on this, but along with the awesome music, I just love to spend time in this town. I just wish I enjoyed the dungeons this much. When you own a lot of video games, it can kind of be tough to figure out what game you want to play next, and as a result I end up just mindlessly looking at all the video games I own and just trying to figure out what I want to play, and sometimes I never come to a conclusion. But one time in particular, I actually decided to pop in Brain Lord just to walk around the town of Toronto, just because I like it that much. I know that's kind of weird, but, but hey, it's a town and I like it. So that's Brain Lord. It's absolutely not the worst game, but there's a reason that nobody talks about it. Overall, it can oftentimes feel like a tedious slog. I give Brain Lord a 6 out of 10. Now keep in mind that this is just my opinion of it, and I think your enjoyment will depend heavily on whether or not you like puzzles. So if this looks like it's up your alley, I would definitely give it a try. This may become one of your favorite games ever. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please hit like, please subscribe. I have a lot more content coming, and I'll see you next week.